there is a, a small group that has obtained now probably a level of wealth in Vietnam that has never been seen before at a personal level. Why Vietnam? Why not? What is a bank trying to do? We help people pay. We help people save. We help people borrow. We help people invest. And we help with protection, insurance needs. So how do we make that as easy and as seamless as possible? We should lead. The only way to lead is a deep, deep, deep understanding of our customers. Welcome to Vietnam Marketing, a brand new series on Viet Success. This is the premium marketing show talking about marketing on the connection, synergy and priority interrelation with business from different business perspective and with different business expertise from leading C-level guests across many industry and sectors. It is our pleasure to have Tecum Bank Priority as strategic sponsor. And today we are having Mr. Darren Berkeley, um, the Chief Retail Banking Group Officer from Tecum Bank, right? That's right, yeah. Great to be with you. Hi. Yeah. So you have 35 years, 35 years impressive number in financial services experience and predominantly in Asia, North America and UK, right? And mostly of the time in senior leadership. So uh, the very first question about this. So after having spent like that much amount of time in developed market, what takes you to Vietnam? <laughs> well, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I actually like Southeast Asia. I do think it's got great potential. Uh, and while I was running businesses in, uh, in, in Thailand and then also in China, I saw many of my clients actually investing more of what normally typically would have gone into both of those markets into Vietnam. Mm. Uh, and, and I'm not going to say it's a China, China plus strategy or anything else. I mean, it's just yeah. different reasons. Yeah, Thailand was becoming a little, a uh, little expensive, uh, at the same time, it's, it's Stability has been somewhat questionable. Yeah, political stability. Political stability. 2014, obviously, with the military coup was a little interesting. Uh, and, uh, and China, for various different reasons, people have wanted to de-risk somewhat. Mm. And Vietnam is a very attractive market from that perspective. And so what we see is a market that is really keen to grow, that is attracting foreign investment, that is building capability, has a tremendously young, energetic, driven uh, labor force, uh, and is growing wealth. Um, all of these conditions uh, make it make it pretty attractive and a, and a catalyst for growth, not just within Vietnam, but also within Southeast Asia. So why Vietnam? Why not? Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so from, from all of that, you're, you're mentioning about a lot of points. So, based on your own experiences and as as well as your like intention back there. So after spending like two or three years in Vietnam already now, right? And what could be the distinctive traits or patterns that you see that, that, that Vietnam market has versus other like developing and also developed markets? And is that distinctive traits bring challenges or opportunities for retail banking players? Yeah, I, I mean, if we if we stay on on retail banking, uh, you know, I think Vietnam is at a stage where retail banking is accelerating, yeah. and it's accelerating. I think there's 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 a couple of drivers for that. Uh, one is where we are within this market, and also to an extent globally on digitalization, mm. uh, and certainly through COVID, uh, adoption of digital channels, digital yeah. capabilities has really taken off in Vietnam. Uh, and so that enables, from a retail banking perspective, a real acceleration of opportunity. Opportunity in terms of how banks can co-create with partners and or by themselves, solutions and offerings that really meet the needs of consumers, but also get access to many more consumers through their mobile phones. Um, and that, that is, is quite exciting. The second is also the, the stage where Vietnam, Vietnam is in terms of its macro development and GDP growth. Mm. Um, GDP growth in or per capita growth in 2022, I think, grew about 10% year on year. It's around $4,100, something like that. Um, is expected to continue to grow uh, pretty significantly over the next few years. 
And with that, what we see is uh, a, a whole population starting to move into a, a different stage of affluence. And there are people at the very top, very few people at the very top. One gentleman very recently, as we saw, really hit the top. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's what, number 32 on Forbes list mm-hmm. um, with, uh, with obviously the IPO of Infast in the United States. Um, but there is a, a small group that has obtained now probably a level of wealth in Vietnam that has never been seen before, a personal level. Uh, but underneath that, there is a, a growing number of individuals who are accumulating wealth. And, and as a retail banker, that's, that's exciting. How do we help continue with the growth of personal wealth as well as preservation of personal, mm-hmm. personal wealth? And at some stage in the future, transfer of personal yeah. wealth to the next generation. Yeah. So I see uh, there would be two big areas here. First is about micro status, a lot of opportunities. And also the acceleration of, of new stuff like digitalize and open a huge space for, for not just bank, but also to reach out further for partners, for different solutions together to serve the consumers. And also because like I have uh, taken some research it's like Vietnam had just come into the reunification for like less than 50 years. And also like we, we come back to the international trading world like after the US leave off the cargo. And from that point of view, it's like the new generation of uh, self-made uh, wealth or affluent is still they, they are growing, but they have little knowledge or even like do not care much about some some developed level of wealth preservation, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. So from all of that kind of distinctive choice of Vietnam, what could be uh, take home by key focus? For example, like you have a lot of stuff, a lot of opportunities, a lot of challenges to be solved, but you cannot like address all of that. So what could be the key focus? Mm. Well, this is first generation wealth. Yeah. Um, really, uh, I think in this market, um, if I think about the time I had in China, it was it was more transfer into that second generation. In Thailand, actually, there's a level of third generation mm-hmm. wealth. Uh, Vietnam is much more first generation, which means the knowledge base in terms of those who are accumulating wealth tends to be very focused in their area of expertise around their particular mm-hmm. business. Um, and, and that's how wealth is being um, uh, accumulated here. People put money into their business, whatever their interests are, they put money into real estate, also very popular. Yeah. Uh, and then there's some short-term uh, sort of investment strategies into different asset classes. So we've seen the growth, somewhat um, irregular growth of the fixed income bond market here in, in Vietnam. Uh, and But also we see equities. And whilst the, the, the equity markets in Vietnam are somewhat skewed towards financial services and uh, real estate, commercial real estate uh, companies and uh, there's still others increasingly getting into uh, getting their companies listed and, and as a result building up uh, capabilities within the equities market but most of the money first of all is going into business there are a lot of entrepreneurs even people who are salaried tend to have a side gig in doing a second thing or a third thing or trying to trade on Facebook or Instagram or or something else um, there's that energy and drive mm. in Vietnam, generally across the population. Um, so yeah, that is, is kind of interesting. So from a tech bank perspective, how do we put it all together? Everybody's different and everybody's at different stages. Yep. Uh, and so I think what I would say is, is kind of, let's differentiate that a little bit. What is a bank trying to do? A bank only does very, very few things. We help people pay. Mm. We help people save. We help people borrow, we help people invest, and we help with protection, insurance needs. That's it. Five things. We, we, we don't do anything else. That, that is a bank. Uh, we hope that we do it in a way that over time people really trust us. Um, because at the end of the day, if you're giving us your money and the money that you've earned over a number of years, we need to make sure that it's safe and it's secure. And I'll give you a, a, a very simple example. If you're one of our customers and you're making a, you regularly make full payments on your credit card and you regularly make that around the same period every month. Well, if we see just a few days ahead of when you normally make your payment that you don't actually have enough money in your current account, well, we'll give you a nudge and say, hey, you normally pay 
mm. in, in full. And, and if you go to do that in the next couple of days, the payment won't go through and then you'll start to incur charges because there's not enough money in the account. So it's just a heads up in case you intend to do that. We're not telling you to pay. You can do anything you want, but we see a behavior and a pattern or how can we use that as an insight to just help you to make sure that, it, hey, if you've just forgotten, we'll help you take care of it so you don't have any, any issues rather than waiting for you not to make a payment or make a payment, it's not enough money in the account, the payment bounces. Mm. As a result of that, your credit card isn't paid. You then start to incur charges and fees. And when you finally notice, you call the bank and you say, huh, hold on, uh, but then we, then we have to cut. No, how do we avoid these problems? We don't want you to have problems because you've got better things to do. All of our clients, they have better things to do than spend their time in a bank. So how do we make that as easy and as seamless as possible? And how do we pull all of our offerings, our service capabilities, the rewards, recognition, and benefits together in a simple way for those customers who have broader, more complicated needs? Mm. Interesting. One, you've really got to understand your customer. Who are you trying to sell for? What are their needs? That tagline is live life richly. Mm. And live life richly is not about being rich. But it's actually, how do we enable you to enjoy the richness of life? So I think that uh, you're mentioning a point about like, because like banking and financial services, they have a lot of, a lot of products and solutions. And people might come to the bank when they need some. But each by like people by people, they at different life stages and you cannot like wait for them to come for you. And you can also not like introducing like piece by piece to them like every single time. So I assume from, from your sharing that branded tiers is the way that you package all of the solutions, but in a meaningful, relevant way to a certain segmentation of consumers. And that, and that somehow could, 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 could streamline the approach and the simplicity and also the new relationship with, with, with tech combined and, and the customer segments. But. Let me um, just have a curious point here, because like Tech Bank once famous as you mentioned by pioneering introducing to the market uh, zero fee banking, right? And also I have uh, previously in the past because like oh, I also like a customer, and normally people recommend only in the past. Uh, we can change that. Okay, <laughs> but my friend recommend me that uh, Tech Bank has the highest like very in, in, like impressive and attractive interest rate for Casa. Mm-hmm. But it's not like powerful enough for me to, to, to switch my main bank into take home bank. So do you think or do you believe that with this approach of branded tier and how you can change that kind of um, barrier, for example, like a customer like me? Well, we hope so. Uh-huh. And this talk shows a little bit around marketing. Mm-hmm. So if we go back to marketing and we think about marketing, right? yep. really, in, in really trying to ensure that your products that you create are valued, there's a couple of things that are very important. One, you've really got to understand your customer. Who are you trying to sell for? What are their needs? What are the customer journeys as they try to fulfill those needs? And then how do you create the product and the journeys that really is as seamless and intuitive as possible for those customers? That's one. But then secondly, you've also got to communicate Otherwise, you can build the best kept secrets, and that's not a good thing either. You have to communicate, but in that communication, the best way is to build an emotional connection through that communication, that interaction. So if we, get, if we think about that, that's exactly what we're trying to do through these branded tiers. The, the solutions and the offerings within are adjusted to meet the different needs of different types of customers as are the service models, as are the rewards, the recognitions, and the, and the benefits. But fundamentally, at each of the different branded tiers, we are, we are bringing together all of our capabilities to serve different groups of customers with specific needs in a way that hopefully, the way we want to serve you, it, it connects with you. There is a, a, an emotional affinity towards what we are trying to, to do. So we launched a year ago, Inspire, Inspire, we, we, it, that tagline is live life richly. Mm. And live life richly is not about being rich, but it's actually how do we enable you to enjoy the richness of life? Those small precious moments that become really important to you, that bring immense joy to you. 
how do we enable you to, through uh, our ability to personalize our, our, our offerings, to empower you to self-serve on things when you need help, they're there and available and easy to use? And how do we ensure that there's complete safety and security in, in so doing? Um, Inspire is, is much more about those who are on a journey of, of personal fulfillment. They, are, they want to live life on their terms. They may still be rooted in traditional Vietnamese family values and, and other values, but that doesn't mean to say they want to follow the same path as their parents or their grandparents or their great-grandparents. Instead, they've been open to a world that is somewhat different. They yeah. see the world. They have, some of them may even have experienced the world firsthand. Um, but it's about how do they live the life on their terms and how do we create a whole financial service uh, uh, um, set of benefits and offerings that enable them to do that. That's what Inspire is all about. Priority, we're yep. talking about a little bit today. So Priority, we were the first to launch Priority in this market 10 years ago. Um, and, and Priority at the time was, was much more about taking those customers who have uh, a higher, um, higher set of assets with us, well, how do we, how do we uh, treat them a little bit better? So if you're going into a branch, you don't have to wait in those queues. We've got a separate area for you. We can take you through there and we can serve you much more quickly because we know that time is, is, is important for you. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we try to differentiate by offering benefits on interest rates on TDs, interest rates on mortgages, etc. That was priority 10 years ago. The relaunch of Priority now is, is much more uh, akin to a full service offering, all channels, all capabilities, but really with an understanding of who these Priority customers truly are. Now, these customers have already achieved a, f a fairly significant level of success within the Vietnamese context, but they are ambitious and they still want to, to drive for more success in the future. These, uh, these, these customers are, are much more uh, discerning. Time really is important for them. And they have many ideas as to what they want to do next. Mm. And, and so the tagline for priority is, is changing. Uh, and it's moving to what's your next? And your ambition becomes our action. We will prioritize you. And we will do all we can to ensure that we can help you achieve whatever it is you want to do next uh, and that's how we're looking at priority all the way up to private yeah. uh, which is really trying to address that that top 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 tier of, of affluent segment in in Vietnam uh, and there it's much more about um, value beyond your sort of expectations uh, they have reached through their own personal capabilities, their business acumen, their knowledge, their skills, a level of wealth which hasn't been seen before in, in Vietnam. They expect the best. Mm. They are private people uh, having a private experience with Tacom Bank. We will serve their needs no matter what they are. We will go to all lengths to meet those needs uh, and we will help them uh, in terms of achieving whatever it is they want to achieve. It may be wealth preservation rather than wealth creation, given the level of wealth they have, um, but it may also be wealth transfer uh, at some point in time. Um, and the level of service through our best uh, private client relationship managers, internationally trained, mm. uh, are there really to help uh, at, at the beck and call of these clients, uh, help help them with any of their onshore financial needs here in Vietnam. Mm. Interesting, and and one of one reminders that I have uh, taken out from your sharing is that like people marketer like me like always say about like you have to understand your your customer, truly understand them. But that that's just a saying. But how you can understand that? And I believe that your sharing is just it's not just about transactional base. It's not just about like their level of wealth, but also deep dive into the the life stages, right? like the dreams and fears and parts and poise, a lot of that, and truly understand them, like what is your, what is their next goal, a house, uh, a car, or maybe some stuff, and, and, and using like your own expertise or whatever kind of enabler to, to, to predict that. And it comes to the point that I would love to, to, to deep dive a little bit more. So because like, I see here, there's a two separate parts. The first part is about the functional values. Of course, they have to understand 
very comprehensive product solution because at the end they come to the bank and they they they, they need to know like the interest rate the how you can keep my money safe or invest my money but the other side would be like your mentioned vanity would have to build emotional connection at take home bank case what is like the journey of approach what is the priority first what is What could become second and, and the ratio of investment of these two? So Techcom Bank has always focused on trying to ensure that we develop market-leading mm. uh, solutions. Our offerings have, or in most cases, led the market. Uh, and, and without exceptional offerings, it's hard to get that emotional connection. So you've got to, you've got to be able to deliver quality. You can't say, hey, get a, tell people X, To get them all excited, but then what you give them, this is the best best whiskey you're ever going to taste, but actually it's it's only water. Yeah. They're going to be very disappointed very quickly. So uh, the quality of the offerings are very, very important. So yeah, Techcom Bank is, is well known uh, in real estate, uh, and we've developed partnerships with some of the best developers in this market to ensure that our clients have access to some of the best opportunities to invest in the real estate market in Vietnam. And there is a whole, uh, there's a whole chain through our wholesale banking, business banking, and retail banking that facilitates this to enable our clients to invest in real estate. Now we have, uh, we have a significant proportion of uh, client money that is invested in real estate at this point in time. Uh, none of these clients have had any issues, even with the current uh, related issues in, in short-term, hopefully, issues that we've seen in the real estate market. Delivering on a commitment to build the best solutions is very important. But once we have them, it's then about how do we, how do we ensure that we actually know who, who needs what, when, in which channel of choice at what point in time is it important for them. And this is where Techcom Bank is actually doing a lot inside the bank, which many customers won't actually see. So we're investing significant amounts of money in digital and technology uh, and in data mm. and in our people. In the last 12 months or so, we've done uh, recruitment roadshows. We did them in Singapore. We did them in San Francisco. Mm. We did them in London. We did them in Sydney, where we're looking to find and attract the best global talent that we can to bring them to Vietnam to enable us to build capabilities that no other bank has. We work with AWS on a cloud solution and are increasingly putting our technology into the cloud in Singapore. We've built uh, a, data, a data lake. With the data lake, we've got some of the smartest, brightest PhDs that can do modeling to help us understand much more about all of our customers in different cohorts, mm. different personas, different segments, as opposed to everybody is the same. We are the first bank here to deploy uh, Adobe Analytics as a marketing tech stack. We've deployed Salesforce, a leading uh, CRM system for all of our frontline salespeople. We deployed last year a completely new mobile banking application, which has a very different look, feel, and interaction model to the other mobile banking applications in the marketplace. All of this technology and this development is coming together so that we can get real insights from the data and the transactions and everything that we see on customers so that we know we have a higher, higher likelihood of knowing when to nudge you with something that is directly relevant as part of one of your daily journeys. And through those journeys, when you get that nudge, hopefully it's at the right time in the channel that is convenient for you, that that turns, turns it around into, a, oh, not another thing from my bank, but to, oh, actually, that's really helpful. Fortunately, as I said right at the beginning, you know, the digitalization and the capabilities that that creates, it enables us to not just look at branded tiers and say, oh, okay, so within these tiers, there's X number of customers, Y number of customers, and they're all the same. They're not. These are not homogeneous groups. Mm. Some are merchants, some are entrepreneurs, some are salaried individuals, some are leaning towards higher consumption, some are, uh, are more into investment, some are more at the family stage where they're looking about education needs, etc. Everybody is slightly different. So what the models and the data and then all of the technology that we've, we've been investing in enables us to do is hopefully ensure that the right offer come back to 
if you can't build leading right. solutions in this marketplace, you've got nothing to sell. The best solutions that we can create, now we're able to start putting them in front of our clients at an individual level. Ultimately, everybody should be a segment of one. How do we get to that ultimate goal of really knowing you so, so well that amongst the 12 million customers that we have, everyone is an individual mm. and everyone is an individual that can get personalized service and support from Techcom Bank because of the advances that we've been able to put into place around data, technology, uh, and digital. Mm. Interesting point. I actually, no, I did. I had one problem with Techcom Bank, but you know what? They fixed it immediately and they made the problem go away. I love them. How do we get to that stage? The focus on being the leading payments bank in Vietnam is really very, very important in being able to deliver against the other promises that we want to make. So I, I see here like, um, it's more like a framework of approach. So at least certainly that like you, you got to understand your customers and customers here, they need to be look at 360, like, and it's not just one point, but the whole lifelong. Yes. And bank here need to understand them and follow them and need to sustain them and using whatever you got into, like in terms of technology capabilities or even like human capital. That's why it take on buying like go far and recruit people, talents from, from all over the world. But coming to the, the emotional part, so you say like very critical points about the functional values, but about the emotional part. Because normally in, for example, I worked in uh, electronics, uh, FMCG beverage, and also in footwear. So emotional values can help you to, for example, retain your customer. They, they have attachment with you or even help you to premiumize like the level they spend because they, they, they trust you and they would love to spend more. So at Tech Combine, emotional value is not just about relationship and about packaging uh, product solution into something comprehensive and emotional value. Uh, could you share more on, on the role and on the purpose of emotional value using branded tiers? The emotional connection that we're building with our branded tiers is, is a little bit of a generalization of the, of the groups of people mm -hmm. that are in those tiers. Uh, around actually meeting their needs uh, in a way that it actually resonates. It's it's not one by one. It's not just oh, this is just Techcom Bank. There are lots of other banks. It's it's a way of banking. Go back, you know, you go back many years ago, right? Uh, and I remember my father, a long time ago, banking for thirty five years. It's, yeah. Um, so yeah, he used to go to the local branch. He was friends with the local bank manager. When they when they actually put in the first ATM machine, he still refused to use it. Because mm. he used to like to go in, chat to the bank manager, get his cash from the nice friendly teller from across the counter, and, and they knew him. If he needed something, if he needed a little bit of financing or he wanted to buy another property, he wanted a mortgage, he'd just walk in. He has a nice conversation. They knew him so well, it's fine, yeah, we can do that. And it, it was a proof for him. Things have moved on, okay? Cost dynamics, serving many, many more customers at scale, etc. There has to be new ways, but how do, we, how do you still create that level of personalization? Mm -hmm. And so the branded tiers and the emotional connection that we create enables us to take those customers who are doing more with us and start to recognize them in different ways, to prioritize and give them a differentiated service model and ultimately start thinking about how we differentiate also on the offerings and solutions that we build for them in the future. But it doesn't mean to say that's good enough uh, because there are many different types of needs and different, different characteristics of the customers still within those, within those uh, branded tiers. And so we have to, we have to replicate that, that old traditional model in a modern world seamlessly so that we really can create the same experiences for our customers. That hyper-personalization, that super trust that exists between one customer and their bank, ultimately leading to very loyal customers 
who will also say when asked, yeah, oh no, I bank with Techcom Bank. I've never had a problem with Techcom Bank. I actually, no, I did. I had one problem with Techcom Bank, but you know what? They fixed it immediately and they made the problem go away. I love them. How do we get to that stage? Hmm. Nice. And I think also a good point from, from, from branded, branded tears and emotional connection, because like, for example, like me, when I look back, like my review, my own like actions I do with, with, with money and with, with banks, it stretches from, from daily transaction. Like I use bank to transfer money to my friends. I use payments and later on to some kind of a key milestone, like home cars. And when it comes to something, oh, I have, um, sufficient amount to invest and to preserve and to distribute to others. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff that I have to, to consider about. And I see that I need someone, it's like a person, advisor or companion that can help me whenever I need. And even they can predict my, my, my behavior just before I have that kind of demand arise. And I see that using the branded tears, using like at each segment, at each stage of life, I have someone that understand me. And then once I have that impression, I go deeply into level product. And I see, wow, the level of uh, extraordinary, exceptional, excelsior stuff. And I think that, 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 that is a very good way of approaching consumer like marketing usually do. The focus on being the leading payments bank in Vietnam is really very, very important in being able to deliver against the other promises that we want to make. Because if you think about payments, actually this goes back to the heart of banks. Banks have had data for a long, long time. Mm. Uh, and un unfortunately with the data, the data has tended to be used for credit decisions, for a risk management purpose, rather than from the purpose of really trying to understand a customer and their needs and addressing those needs uh, through the customer's life cycle. Um, so fintechs step in. Mm. And with fintechs, you know, Momo. Momo came in 2012 here. Momo was probably a little bit ahead of its time for Vietnam, uh, about the same time as Alipay in China. Mm. Um, but, um, you know, they, they came in because they were able to realize that onboarding large customers, seeing a lot of payment data, how to use that data to understand customers better and serve them in different ways was something that banks weren't very good at. Well, over the last few years, banks have got a lot better at it. Finally, we should have done it a lot earlier Then maybe there wouldn't have been yeah. fintechs, but hey, it's okay, good competition. It makes us better, all of us. Uh, and, and so um, you know, that transactional data, once you really look into, once the models look into that transactional data, we're able to see things in a very different way. If I think back to my time in China, so I, I worked very closely with uh, Alipay uh, and actually did a, uh, a partnership with them. And one of the requirements in, uh, in China at the time was to make sure that there's a national ID, there's an address on the national ID, you had to capture that. Banks needed to get that and they also needed to go get the current address. The intent was that we needed to have that address because under the regulations we needed to know how to contact you and so the regulations were written with that intent and and it was interpreted we needed these two addresses alipay not at all what did they look at they looked to see what was the most frequent delivery address mm. because they knew that if you're ordering something every day around midday your lunch a coffee tea, whatever, and it's going to this address, well, guess what? They're more likely to be able to reach you at that address. Forget the address on your national ID. Forget the address you tell us is your home address. What they're really, really interested in, what's, what's the address where they're most likely to be able to contact you? That's how they fulfilled the regulations. Now, we as a bank, we looked at that and go, oh, but the regulations kind of say this. Is, is, is that is that right? Uh, and, and don't we still need these? And they don't get that. How can we partner with them if we don't have all the, the right know your customer information? But the reality of it is they were just smarter than us. We learned from them. Yeah. And, and we will learn from everybody if we open our eyes. Uh, and through those learnings, find out better ways to be able to understand our customers and serve our customers. Mm. So we have talked about a lot about like current and, and look back a lot at your sharing. 
So let's um, shift the angle to more future forward a little bit. So recently I do some of my own research and I see in, in banking industry, there are a lot of trends, but rising amongst all of that trend is digital banking and open banking platform. So I think open banking is a nice uh, concept of um, integrating microservices to serve more on consumers, customers, and how to make them interact, transact, and, and attach with the bank more. But if, you want, if like for example, a bank want to do a lot of stuff like that, will they lose focus on their own? And what do you think about these kind of two uh, trends on in banking and, and what is tech bank approach on these trends? Well, first of all, tech bank won't lose focus on what's important. Mm. Yeah. Because we know what's important is our customers. That's it. Mm -hmm. So does it make sense for us to, to do anything? It only makes sense if it makes sense for our customers. I smile a little bit when you talk about open banking. Um, I was actually uh, a keynote speaker mm. um, at the uh, at the Alipay conference. Um, and I was the keynote speaker on open banking, um, which was the conference where Jack Ma made a few comments that led to the IPO being cancelled. It was quite an interesting time. Um, that to one side. But open banking is important. Partnerships are important. If I think about tech on bank, why have we partnered with big real estate companies? We've been very selective in the ones that we've worked with. We've done our own due diligence to become comfortable that, yeah, these developers have a high quality solution that will meet the needs of different types of, uh, of our customers, particularly those who are interested in investing in real estate. So if you think about big asset classes that you can invest in here, real estate being one, we realize that we as a bank, we, we want to be a mortgage provider or do we want to help our more affluent clients invest in real estate? We are, we're both. You can buy a home, live in a home and we provide a mortgage. Or you can invest in real estate. You can invest in multiple real estate. We have some people who buy 30, 40, 50 apartments really investing in real estate financed by Techcombank. We found the best partners to enable us to deliver a solution. We will open up our platform to different partners. We announced um, last year our partnership with NASA mm. uh, and WIN. And we've, uh, we've onboarded uh, close to 1 million customers this year through that WIN partnership. Uh, and that is a partnership where we are really about, uh, really involved in everyday convenience. Um, and, and the chairman of Masan is regularly challenging the bank to say, how can we ensure that when someone goes into a win store, they are completely enabled to be able to purchase whatever they want to purchase in a cashless, appless, mm. cardless way. Because there are certain parts of Vietnam where getting hold of cash from the ATM is a pain. Maybe there's not enough. Maybe the latest version of the mobile phone isn't yeah. so easy um, and they don't have a debit or a credit card how can you enable them to pay so uh, he's challenging techcom bank to be even more innovative in our payment capabilities to serve the needs of everybody across you know, across vietnam um, so we will find what we think would be the best partners to better serve our customers where we see our customers have a specific need whether open banking, whether anything else becomes important, we've selected partners, be they back-end partners, technology partners, or whether they've been partners who help us with solutions. Yeah, we have some really leading uh, equities capabilities, but that's through our securities business, separate to the bank, but part of the group. Um, and we'll continue to try and find the right partners, either to help deliver solutions that meet needs and or provide benefits. Mm that are relevant to consumers as they go around doing certain things. Uh, we've just partnered with Starbucks, for example. Uh, it's proving to be hugely successful. I never knew everybody, and so many people like going into Starbucks to supersize their coffee. I drink espresso, I, yeah, single shots, but evidently there's a lot of lovers of supersized, uh, upsized Starbucks coffee, uh, courtesy of Tech Compact. Interesting. So I think that, um one of the key learning here today is like I myself treat myself a learner and I learn a lot from, from guest speakers, especially this today for you, is that whatever you want to do, just understand your customer, put customer at a centric and truly understand, not just by saying, but using whatever kind of enabling 
power force you have, from human technology, etc. Understand them to the root of their values, their promises, their, 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 their dreams, their passions, and using that as a nail and anchor and to influence back on products, how to serve them well. Influence back on branding, how to communicate with them, how to make them understand brand as a partner, maintaining relationship, build up relationship, and, 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 and serving them as a lifelong customer. And also on, on, on whatever kind of trends is going on in the world, as long as you know what is your focus, you can easily pick and choose what is the most important and beneficial both for the customer and both for, for, for your own business. And interesting, boy, but and very last question that I've shared with you previously. So bank and person, to me, it's like, it's not love-hate to the extreme level, but somehow it's in between relationship. I put money in, bank charges me fee, transactional base. But on your kind of belief, vision, and you wish to do something, what is the simple phrase for your imagination or your wish that is the relationship between bank and person could be? Yes, uh, that's kind of interesting. I think um, when I went to university, the motto of my university was do different. Mm. Uh, and I remember when I was growing up, my mother always used to say, you know, don't be like everybody else. You don't have to follow the crowd. Do what you want to do. I feel a little bit like that with our Inspire branded tier. Mm -hmm. go, to, go live life on your terms. So yeah, I did. I, I got up, I went to Africa, and I went and worked in all over the place. Lucky in the markets so I, that I got to work with. So, so do different. In a way, do different is relevant for our banking services to our clients. Just because VP Bank has a great credit card offer or MB Bank has this new fancy uh, feature in their mobile app, it doesn't necessarily mean that we should follow the crowd. We should lead. The only way to lead is a deep, deep, deep understanding of our customers. Many banks over the years, in all the countries I've worked for, many companies that I have served as not always been in retail banking, but a lot of corporate and institutional banking. Many of my clients in, in those days also used to say, hey, we're very client-centric. But there's client-centric and there's client-centric. And I think Techcom Bank really is an incredibly client-centric bank. We are so focused on really understanding our customers and their needs, then validating whatever we do through an extensive feedback mm -hmm. loop. Did we actually deliver? And if not, how do we change it? How do we change it? How do we improve it? So do different. Don't do the same as everybody else. Lead everybody else. Mm -hmm. We don't feel that we need to try and catch others. So do different. Do different, but do it right for our customers. Once again, it is our pleasure to have Take On Bank Priority as our strategic sponsor. And thanks for listening. You can support us by subscribing uh, via Success YouTube. Like, share, comment, follow us on platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And you can listen to all of the episodes of the podcast on special live podcast platform like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Goodbye, and see you.